everyone today we'll discuss about management of class 2 malocclusion in a growing patient so i'll be discussing introduction classification etiology features of malocclusion and treatment approaches so coming to the introduction class 2 malocclusion is considered as the most frequent problem presenting in the orthodontic practice so class 2 malocclusion may also involve craniofacial discrepancies which can adjust when the patient are adolescent so it's a broad and pervasive area of concern as 30 percentage of all orthodontic patients seek treatment for malocclusion the prevalence among the global population is 18 to 34 percentage the northern state of indian population have a 15 percentage of prevalence of class 2 malocclusion so class 2 malocclusion can be due to mandibular retrognathism or maxillary prognathism or a combination of both Maxillary retrognathic area for accounts for 75 percentage of class 2 malocclusion cases and is most dominant factor. So coming to the classification, class 2 is classified into dental class 2 and skeletal class 2. So Edward H. Angle in 1899 given the classification, he classified into three types according to the molar relation. First one is class 1, second one is class 2, third one is class 3. So class 1. Uh, is the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar should fall in the buccal groove of mandibular molar that is class 1 malocclusion or class 1 molar relation next is class 2 distal buccal cusp of the maxillary molar should fall in the buccal groove of the mandibular molar that is class 2 class 2 got two division and one subdivision so class 2 div 1 is distal buccal cusp of the maxillary molar should fall in the buccal groove with proclination of upper anterior Class 2 div 2 is distal buccal cusp of the maxillary molar should fall in the buccal groove of the mandibular molar with retroclined upper incisor. <coughs> Next is class 2 subdivision which means class 2 molar relation on one side and class 1 molar relation on the other, another side that is class 2 subdivision. subdivision. Next is class 3. It is the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar should fall in the interdental space between maxillary first and second molar. <coughs> we have true class 2 and we have pseudo class 2. Next is class 3 subdivision. Class 3 subdivision means one side class 3 and another side it is class 1. So as you can see in the picture, uh, a diagrammatic representation of class 1, uh, mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary molar fall in the uh, buccal groove of the mandibular molar okay next picture is class 2 distal buccal cusp of the maxillary molar should fall in the buccal groove of the mandibular molar <coughs> sorry this is a diagrammatic representation of class 2 div 1 class 2 molar relation with proclaimed upper incisor with deep bite okay so in class 2 div 1 we can see a patient is having a convex profile constricted maxillary arch and patient exhibit a lip trap okay because of the retrognathus of mandible so next is class 2 div 2 so class 2 subdivision class 2 div 2 uh, as you can see in the picture the uh, there will be class 2 molar relation and upper incisor will be retroclined that is central incisor is retroclined and lateral incisor are proclined Next, coming to the skeletal class 2 malocclusion. Skeletal class 2 malocclusion, it results from an andro-posterior dis disproportion in size or discrepancy in position of the jaw, which is divided into three. First one is mandibular deficiency, that is a retrognathic mandible with orthognathic maxilla. Second one, maxillary excess, which means a prognathic maxilla with normal mandible. Third is a combination of these, both, these two which means a prognathism maxillary prognathism with mandibular retrognathism so coming to the mandibular deficiency uh, it can be caused by size of the jaw so patient exhibit protruded maxillary anterior teeth and deficiency of chin caused by retruded mandible so this is a diagrammatic representation of class 2 with uh, class 2 retrognathic mandible with orthognathic maxilla as you can see in the picture the mandible is retrognathic 
Next is maxillary excess. So it may present as overall development of maxilla, over development of maxilla in vertical and anteroposterior dimension or both. Vertical maxillary excess characterized by inferior position of teeth with a normal vertical position of incisors. Maxillary anteroposterior excess is characterized by protrusion of entire mid face including the nose, infraorbital area as well as the upper lip. So this is the diagrammatic representation of prognathic maxilla with an orthognathic mandibular. As you can see in the picture, the maxillary segment is prognathic and the mandibular segment is normal or orthognathic. So next third is a combination of mandibular deficiency and maxillary excess which means prognathic maxilla and a retrognathic mandible. It is a common to have a combination of mandibular deficiency and maxillary excess each of which would be added to a severity of the anteroposterior skeletal problem. So this is a diagrammatic representation you can see a maxillary prognathism with a mandibular retrognathism. So, so we will discuss about etiology of class 2 deep 1. So etiology can be skeletal, it is divided into four. First one is skeletal pattern, second is soft tissue, third one is habit, fourth one is dental factor. So coming to the skeletal factors, usually associated with retrognathism of mandible. As you can see in the picture, uh, the patient is having a retrognathic mandible. So coming to the soft tissue, influence of soft tissue is mainly mediated by skeletal, anteroposteriorly or vertically. Third one is habit, uh, proclination of upper incisor, retroclination of lower labial segment, incomplete overbite or localized anterior open bite, narrowing of maxillary arch due to the alteration in, in the balance between cheek and tongue pressure. Last one is dental fracture which result in crowding in the upper incisor out of the arch labially result in exacerbation of overjet. So coming to the cephalometric findings. So cephalometric findings we have to look for SNA angle, SNB angle, ANB angle, upper incisor to NA angle, reduced inner incisor angle, FMA and IMPA. So SNA which means cella a line connecting cella to the nasion and nasion to point A. Uh, the normal value will be 82 plus or minus 2. So in a class 2 case, increased SNA greater than 84 degree which represent a prognathic maxilla. Uh, so decreased SNB. So SNB normal value will be 80 degree plus or minus 2 degree. So decreased SNB angle less than 78 indicating of retrognathic mandible. So third one is A and B angle. So A and B angle the normal value will be 2 degree plus or minus 2 degree. So increased A and B angle greater than 4 degree indicate class 2 skeletal base. Next one is upper incisor to NA angle. So if the value is increasing which indicate the maxillary incisors are proclaimed. So next is reduced inner incisor angle. So re reduced inner incisor angle indicate proclination of upper and lower incisor. Both upper incisor and lower incisors are proclined. So next one is FMA, Frankfurt mandibular plane angle. It is the angle between Frankfurt horizontal plane and mandibular plane. Okay, if the value is increased if the value is greater than 28 degree which indicate vertical growth pattern if the value is decreased or less than 28 degree which indicate a patient is a horizontal growth pattern okay next is increased IMPA angle IMPA means incisor mandibular plane angle the normal value will be 90 degree if the value is greater than 90 degree which indicate lower incisors are proclined so coming to the class two uh, etiology of class two deep two skeletal we have skeletal soft tissue and dental skeletal class two anteroposterior skeletal base relationship vertical anterior proportion if often reduced next is soft tissue high lower lip line can retrocline the maxillary incisor highly active lip can cause bimaxillary dental retrusion 
increased masticatory muscle tone is associated with uh, reduced facial proportion next is dental the lack of occlusal stop resulting in increased overbite abnormal crown root is possible etiological factors for a increase in interincisor angle next we'll move to the management of class 2 so class 2 management is divided into growing patient and non growing patient so we are dealing with growing patient in this chapter so coming to the growing patient uh, it is of two types one is skeletal growth and one is skeletal class 2 next one is dental class 2 so skeletal class 2 in a growing patient we can give a growth modification therapy so we have a three situation like prognathic maxilla retrognathic mandible and a combination so prognathic maxilla we can give headgear with intrusion splint okay we uh, we can restrict the maxillary uh, further growth of maxilla by giving a headgear and we can dislice the maxilla also next one is retrognathic mandible so we can use a functional appliance so as we all know that functional appliance is a loose fitting or passive appliance which harness the force from the orofacial musculature and transmitted to the skelet uh, dendroalveolar segment through a medium of muscle that is the definition of uh, functional appliance so we can give functional appliance like twin block activator bionator frangles appliance third one is combination that means prognathic maxilla and retrognathic mandible so in that case in that particular case we can give a headgear with functional appliance for example we can give headgear with twin block appliance okay next is treatment of dendroalveolar class 2 dendroalveolar class 2 can be treated by correction of dendroalveolar segment which means we can reduce the reduction of the overjet deep bite correction cross bite correction and molar correction